Hi guys, we're back. We have Antonio. So if anyone has questions, please raise your hand. Um, Jim Varcelone, why don't you get us started? Hey Antonio, Jim Varcelone with Miami Herald. What's I up, wanted to a, a wanted to ask you about Josh Silvero because now he's part of PFL and I didn't know if you've been sparring with him and what are your thoughts of him and maybe, hey, even you two down the road hooking it up. Yes, uh, me and Josh, we uh, great friends, you know, his son of my head coach, Conan Silveira. Uh, man, he's a really good, great trainer, you know, he's a great wrestler, always helping each other, you know, he's trying to help me in the wrestling. I'm always trying to help at the jiu-jitsu, we always train together. You know, and unfortunately he couldn't he couldn't make this week uh, because he got a little little injury. You know, on the last week, last training. Uh, but yeah, man, this guy is good. He's uh, somebody you should looking for. And what has it been like for you getting ready for this season, coming into this season as a champion? Oh, brother, what a good feeling! You know, <laughs> coming here with the belt, you know, as a champion is awesome. Uh, looking forward to get it started, you know. Uh, I've been training since the, you know, since the final, since I got the belt. I've been training a lot, you know, different camps, trying to improve all my game, you know, all, all the different aspects of the game. And that's it, you know, looking forward to the first fight. And lastly, for me, we know Dan Lambert is big in professional wrestling, Antonio, <laughs> and he's on All Elite Wrestling. And we've seen Paige Van Zandt, Junior Dos Santos, and many others on the show. I'm wondering, are you ready for when Dan Lambert calls Shoeface to come with him to AEW? <laughs> Man, I don't really know. But to be honest, you know, I never really did, you know. But if he asked me to go, for sure, I would go with him. You know, it would be a great experience for sure. Hey, thank you. All the best this season. <laughs> thank you, man. Curtis. Hi, Antonio. This is Curtis Calhoun with Curtis. MMA News. How's it going, man? Oh, great, man. How about you? I'm doing great. Hey, uh, quick question for you. Obviously, you've always been known uh, for your Brazilian jiu-jitsu inside the cage. Uh, but last year, we really saw you take uh, big steps forward with your striking. Uh, how was working with guys like uh, Junior Dos Santos and others down at uh, ATT helped you develop that aspect of your game? Oh, a lot, man. Something that I trying to improve on my game, you know, because everybody, as you said, everybody know me as a jiu-jitsu guy. But it's MMA, you need to mix it up, everything, you know. Uh, on the last month, uh, I, I spent some time in Thailand, too, you know, trying to improve the the, the kicks and everything. Try uh train with uh, Leo Elias, you know, what is a great, great coach, you know, former a lot of champions over there. And... Always trying to, as I said, always trying to prove every aspect of the game, you know. I got to mix it up, you know, make it easy to take the guys to the ground and work on my jiu-jitsu. But I can't force anything, you know. You need to make things happen, you know. But forcing, I think, is a big mistake. And I'm trying to be good in every aspect of the game, you know. And the holes that I see on my game is on the was on the striking, but I, I feel I improve it a lot lately you know thanks Antonio thank you Dave hey this is Dave here with Fight Bananas uh Tony last year last fall when you won the championship down there in South Florida uh out of all the champions to be bluntly honest you seem so happy organic and raw and natural uh, in the crowd taking pictures with friends and family and fans mm. Um, how important is it to uh you know repeat this year to really capture that uh that memory and that those feelings Oh, it's great, man. It's good to do one time, but two times even better. Three times, way better, <laughs> you know. So it was a great moment in my life, you know, especially after the time that I, uh, I was leaving, you know, in the UFC. Uh, I got some injuries and loss uh, and come back, get a, like good wins over the uh, tough guys, get the belt, you know, becoming the champion was really great, you know, and... Uh, fighting in Florida was even more special because I have all my friends and family that, you know, cheering for me, 
uh, I could embrace them after five, you know, hug everybody, kiss everybody, you know, I have a lot of friends together and I could feel the energy inside the cage. Great skill Wednesday. Can't wait. Bro, uh, I want to do my best on, uh, on Wednesday, you know, I hope you're going to see uh, even better Antonio Carlos Jr., you know, even better shoe face, a better fighter, you know, confident and looking forward to get another belt. Uh, Breeze. Hey, Antonio, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. What's up, bro? How you doing? <clears throat> I just wanted to ask, you know, you're way more experienced than your opponent, De La Monte, you know, and, and he seen, and when speaking with him, he was fairly confident that he has what it takes to stuff your takedowns. He says he's not going to give up a takedown to you. And he says his big shots will land. He plans to KO you. Um, what do you make of the experience difference and the uh, assertions that he's made leading up to the fight? Um, I actually, I couldn't see a lot of his fights because doesn't have a lot of things on the internet, you know? Um, but I know he's, he doesn't have a lot of experience in MMA, you know, he's, uh, for sure a young guy, a uh, hungry guy, you know, looking forward to make his, you know, make his name on the sport. And he's always somebody you need to be careful. Uh, but I think the, the experience is going to help me out, you know, uh, as I said, you know, I'm not just uh, I'm a, a jiu-jitsu fighter. You know, I'm improving in every aspect of my game. You know, you could see the last uh, the last season. You know, uh, I was a striking against the strikers. You know, I take down some wrestlers. You know, that's what you could see for me. Uh, and this comes uh, with experience. You know, like make things happen. You know, uh, mix it up. Uh, using never respect in the right time. And that's what I pretend to do on Wednesday to get a win. Very good. Best of luck to you. Thank you, brother. Jonathan. Jonathan Ramlikan, Five Region Sports. Antonio, fighters tend to take away a lot more from losses when those occur, but you still want to take away a lot from your victories. What can you take away from your wins last season that you can use to help grow this season? I think uh, I get more confident, you know, man. Uh, I was coming uh, with like three three losses in UFC, you know what I mean? All pretty close, but like even though it was a loss, you know, some injuries and stuff. And I could get back to the wins, you know, could back some uh, uh, good wins though uh, against tough guys. And these make me more confident, you know, believing in the work that we've been doing on American Top Team, you know, in everything. Um, going to 205 was a good decision too, you know. Uh, I think was something that uh, was not helping me out in the train, you know. I, I, I feel I couldn't perform the same way that I, I was working on the gym. And also I was getting a lot of injuries. So last year was, I made a, a lot of good decisions, you know, come to PFL, uh, go into 4 two, five, um, you know, and fighting against the tough guys was a great experience to make me believe in everything, you know, that we've been working for. And on the championship, becoming the champion was just an incredible experience, you know, and just make make increase my my confidence you know and working hard for this year awesome thank you and good luck this season thank you brother jake jake foley here how are you doing today my friend how are you doing brother i'm good thank you i'm doing great as well i was just wondering so after losing your last three ufc fights and then dominating the pfl last year do you think there's a major skill gap between the promotions or did you improve drastically over the last year and a half not at all i think just uh i think was the like the the, ch the change that i made on my life you know like going 205 was better for me i think 185 i couldn't perform the way i won you know you see a lot of guys who came from ufc and lost in his fights you know and i i'm talking about like Big names, you know, you can you can tell like Anthony Pettis, you know, Harry McDonald, you know, all these guys was in the top. Uh, Fabricio Verdun, you know, all these they're really good. Uh, so I don't think there's this gap. Uh, what I think that happened to me is uh, going for two or five was 
the best decision that I made, you know, uh, and, you know, just coming back, I think all the losses on UFC was a pretty close fight, you know, uh, if you see my fight against the right hall, especially, you see, I think that I won that fight, you know, uh, the first round was, was what made the, the difference, you know, he won the second and won the third and some was a split decision, you know, two referees gave to him the first round. I don't think so. I don't agree with that. Uh, but uh, when I come here, you know, I think that the, uh, I could, I could, I don't know. I could uh, do all, all that I want, you know, and changing the division, I think was the, just makes a big difference for me, you know. So my follow-up question is that there seems to always be such a large pressure on a fighter to, you know, cut that extra weight to get that advantage. Do you think that pressure comes from the actual promotion or the fighter putting it on themselves? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, so my follow-up question was just that um, it seems like there's always such a pressure for fighters to cut that extra weight to have an advantage. Does that pressure come from the promotion themselves or the fighter putting it on themselves to try to get that advantage? I think the fighter put it on themselves, you know, like it's good for sure. It's good to be like the, the big guy on the division. This is awesome, you know, but um, you, you need to, you know, in some point it's not going to be good for your healthy and for your perform, uh, especially he on PFL, you know, you got to fight every two months. So fighting every two months, cutting the weight every two months is not an easy work, you know, so uh, you're not going to have life. You, you, you need to live on the diet, you know, and I don't think this works for me very well. You know, you could see the difference, you know, um, between me fighting 185 and me fighting 205. Uh, my, my first, first round was never my best round, you know, and on the UFC 185, you know, the first round was being my my best round, you know, I was getting tired, you know, <laughs> and for sure, this is because the, the weight cut, you know, I used to cut what, like uh, 35 pounds. What is a lot for me? You know, I used to walk around like 220, a little less, maybe, you know, 218, 220. So was a lot of weight, you know, some guys said they like to do that. I don't really like it. You know, I feel I have no life, you know, I need to do a tough diet and, and I could feel the end of the camp, you know, I was not perform the same way that I was doing in the beginning of the camp. So that was not good for me. And I was feeling way better now. Thank you for the, your time. Best of luck this season. Thank you so much, brother. Tutor. Um. Hello, Antonio. This is Tudorleonte for Shordot.com. Um, I know that one of your closest training partners and friends is Marcus Bushesha. Uh, did you guys train together for your fights he, since he's fighting this week too? Yeah, bro. We always train together, especially in jiu-jitsu, you know. Uh, we do sport too much because, you know, he's a jiu-jitsu guy. You don't see, uh, I'm not going to see a big, like, jiu-jitsu guy like him. You know, uh, at least this season, I think I, I'm not going to see it. Uh, but we always train together. And it's a bad news, but um, unfortunately, he's gonna he's not going to fight this week. You know, his, his opponent got hurt. It looks like he, they need to reschedule the, the fight and probably going to be next month or, or so. I don't know. But yes, brother, he's uh, my really big brother, you know, and we always trying to help each other, you know, train with each other and support in whatever we can. Um, I know that he is currently signed with another promotion. He is getting all the experience he needs uh, in MMA. But is there any chance he will fight in the United, uh, United States sooner or later? Yeah, I hope so. You know, uh, I heard about uh, 1FC trying to come to US. I'm not sure about that. You know, I just heard something about it. Uh, would be great, you know, you never know about the future, but I think he would love to, especially because he lives here, you know, getting, you know, the, the trip to, you know, to Asia is not a good trip, to be honest, you know, sometimes like, what, 
12, 14 hours different is a uh, is tough for us, you know. So I think he would love to fight here for sure. Thank you very much and best of luck for this season. Uh -huh, thank you, brother. Johan. Hi, Antonio. This is Johan of Tunnel Vision Sports. Um, you've had a great PFL 2021. What is the most surprising thing you've learned about yourself? You know, training, sparring, dieting, doing jujitsu as champion, approaching this match as champion. Um, I think was the doubt about how I would perform on 205. You know, I thought I was too small for the division, you know, but at the end of the season, I see that was the perfect way for me, to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? I couldn't, uh, I didn't want to like leave in the tough diet or whatever, you know, it was pretty hard for me. And, you know, end of the season, I was more confident in myself too, you know, because I didn't know how I was going to be, you know, going up in the division. Uh, but I think was way better. Well, thank you and have a great season. <laughs> thank you, man. Danny? Antonio, yeah, how are you? Danny from MMA Junkie. How are you doing, bro? Good, man. Good. Uh, so how's life as a millionaire? Get asked. <laughs> oh, it's great, man. It's great. I actually, I didn't change much. Just the numbers got a little up on the bank account. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, and PFL has this interesting format where, where there's a season. Uh, was it nice to be off season because you know, you know, you're not going to get a call last minute. Hey, can you fight in two weeks or anything like that? Um, how was it like this off season mentally and knowing like, Hey, I have this assigned time to like chill, relax, do whatever I want. Uh, man, it was good. You know, it's good to know when you're going to fight, you know, prepare yourself. You could, do a better schedule, you know, preparing yourself. So I chill a little bit in Brazil, but start training right away. You know, I didn't get hurt. I just trying to do everything that my, my coaches had to do. You know, I try to improve in some different aspects of the game. I did some different camps, you know, I was to Salvador Bahia training with Luis Doris and boxing. And then I went to Thailand, training some Muay Thai over there you know, uh, improve some aspects of my game that I, I want to improve. And, you know, get back home, train at uh, American Top Team. And as soon as I knew that the opponent get ready for him. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, like this offseason is always good, you know. Uh, especially my my conditioning code loving, you know, because he, he could, like, uh, prepare the training for, like, uh, the – the right date, you know, so <laughs> was better for him too. Yeah, for sure. And, and you were one of the most successful stories in MMA uh, last year. So I got to ask you, um, obviously, you know, a tremendous run in the PFL. Um, and this is prize fighting after all. So I want to ask, did you make more money within that one year of PFL than the five or six years that you competed within the UFC? Yes, for sure. <laughs> By by a lot, was it close or? Uh, at least at least the double, at least I would say. Okay. Nice. Yes. Is it kind of crazy because I mean, in one year you basically yeah. won what you um, made in the UFC for for six five years, and you know you were a top contender. It's not like you were fighting in the prelims or anything like that all the time. Yeah, this was crazy, man. I think uh, I made on UFC what I paid in tax, like, uh, you know, this year. <laughs> uh, the thing is, I had the contract, you know, with the Ultimate Fighter was, you know, 10 fights. So it was a lot. Yeah. Uh, I think that will happen to me. You know, I didn't have a, a great manager at the time, you know, to help me out with this. And, you know, this cost me a lot of money. Yeah. Well, best of luck. Looking forward to the season. It's going to be a fun one. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man. All right. Last question, Randall. Hey, champ. I'm glad you mentioned Thailand because I saw your Instagram and you have to tell me what it was like uh, playing around with those tigers. <laughs> it was great, man. It was great. You know, it was a good experience. Uh, I always see the, the pictures of my friends, you know, over there with the tigers and stuff. And I said, man, I want to do that. You know, there's the elephants, the tigers and everything was was a what a great experience i took a lot of pictures and videos 
Call me cliche, but do you now have the eye of the tiger going into this tournament? I always had it. <laughs> <laughs> I never lost that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, champ. <laughs> thank you, brother. All right, Antonio, thank you so thank much. You. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate thank you. you.